In this lecture, I want to show you the importance of the Dirac delta in defining the inverse Fourier transform from the Fourier transform. So let's start from the following function. The function is delta sub a of x, which uh, is a function non-zero only in an interval between minus a over 2 and a over 2. And the function has the following value. So this value here is 1 over a. And then outside this interval here and also here, the function is equal to 0. Let's calculate the following, the following integral, integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function delta sub a of x e to the minus i kx dx. This is defined as the Fourier transform. It is also possible to define it with a, a plus sign instead of a minus sign, but I will not get into these kind of details in this uh, lecture or video, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, this is equal to integral from minus a over 2 to a over 2 because the function is non-zero only in this interval and it is equal to 1 over a and then I have e to the minus i k x dx and now this is a quite a simple calculation. This is equal to 1 over a and then I have to evaluate e to the minus i k x divided by minus i k in the interval minus a over 2, a over 2. And this is equal to minus 1 over i a k e to the minus i k a over 2 minus e to the i k a over 2, which we can rewrite as 2 divided by a k. And then I have e to the i k a over 2 minus e to the minus i k a over 2 and we divide by 2i so this is equal to 2 divided by i k times the sine of k a over 2 and now if we let a go to 0 the function delta a of x will become the Dirac delta and let me put it here so we set or Better, say, better to say a goes to 0. So we have 2 over a k, and then the sign will behave as k a over 2. So it will behave like the argument. And therefore, this is equal to 1 in the limit, which means that in the limit, the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the Dirac delta of x, e to the minus i k x dx, is equal to 1, which is something that should be evident from the definition of the Dirac delta. It is a function which is non-zero only at x equal to 0, and it is 0 only when x is not equal to 0, So, and in particular it is equal to infinity when x is equal to 0. So it's not really a function, it is a distribution, and its area is equal to 1. And we can simply evaluate this complex exponential, since it is multiplied by delta of x, we can evaluate it at x equal to 0. Therefore, we can set 1 here, and therefore this is like the integral of the Dirac delta, but the integral of the Dirac delta is the area of the Dirac delta, under the Dirac delta, let's say. So if we think of the Dirac delta as the limit here, we can see that the area of this rectangle will remain the same if we let a go to 0, because the area of this rectangle is 1 over a, which is the height, times the length here, which is just a over 2 minus, minus a over 2, but this is 1 over a times a, which is 1. So even if we set a, or actually even if we let a approach 0, well, the area will remain equal to 1. So also in the limit, the integral of the Dirac delta over the entire region, over the entire real axis, it will be equal to 1. This is just a warm-up, so this is not what I wanted to show in this video. But in particular, we calculated this uh, Fourier transform here 
And in the limit as a goes to zero, we saw that this is equal to one. But now let's start from here, from this uh, expression. And let's calculate this integral. We have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of that expression, which is minus one or i a k e to the minus i k a over two minus e to the i k a over two. And then we multiply this by e to the i k x. We integrate over k in this case, and we divide by two pi. So I have taken this function and I have multiplied it by the complex exponential with the with the opposite sign. So instead of a minus here, we have a plus. In case we had a plus here, we should have put a minus here, but mm, I, I will stick to this kind of notation here. And instead of integrating over x, I'm integrating over k, and I'm also dividing by this constant factor 2 pi. In the limit, as a goes to 0, we know that this will be equal to 1, right? But I want to calculate this integral like this, and then we will take the limit after that. So in particular, we can rewrite this integral in uh, the following manner. So this is equal to, we have minus 1 over 2 pi i a. This is just a constant factor. And then I have integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus i k a over 2 minus x divided by k dk minus integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the i k a over 2 plus x divided by k dk. And this is where I resort to complex calculus. In here, you can evaluate these two integrals, which have actually the same form. So if you calculate one of them, you would also be able to calculate the other by using the residue theorem and choosing an appropriate contour. It is possible to, to calculate these two integrals quite easily. And I have also given several examples in my course, for example, on, on a complex calculus. And you might also find some lectures on YouTube, but whatever. So I'm not going to calculate rigorously these two integrals uh, here in this video because I've already shown how to calculate them in uh, other videos. So I will give you the result. This integral can be written in this form, i pi, and then I have the signum function of x minus a over 2, whereas this one here, without this minus sign, so the minus sign is out of this um, expression that I'm going to write. So I have i pi signum function of x plus a over 2. We can rewrite it in this manner. And then uh, let me rewrite this expression like this. This is 1 over 2a. And then I have signum function x plus a over 2 minus signum function of x minus a over 2. And now the signum function can be written in terms of the step function. It is quite easy to show that this is equal to twice the step function, that I will call it theta, of x plus a over 2 minus 1. So it's a very simple exercise to show that this is equal to the signum function. And then if you substitute the same expression also for this one, you will get that you can rewrite this as, let me write it here, theta of x plus a over 2 minus theta of x minus a over 2 divided by a. And if you let a go to 0, this will simply be equal to the derivative of the step function theta of x. And the derivative of the, the, of the step function, theta of x, is equal to the Dirac delta. And this is another quite uh, simple result that you can see from here. Because if you plot this kind of function, so if you sketch it, by knowing that the step function is equal to 1 if its argument is greater than 0, and it is equal to 0 if its argument is negative, well, you can plot this... Uh, difference here divided by a and you will get this function here you will get delta sub a 
of x. So this is 1 over a in the interval from minus a over 2 to a over 2. And it will be 0 out of this uh, interval. So we have found that in the limit as uh, a goes to 0, this integral, and we know that it, it will simplify because this will be 1 as capital A goes to 0. We have found the following result. Integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the i k x d k is equal to 2 pi times delta of x. So I have simply put 2 pi here on the right. We started from this expression here. So it was divided by 2 pi, but it doesn't really matter, right? So I can put 2 pi here. And this is the expression. And you would find the same result also if you had a minus sign here. So you can either put a plus or a minus. It doesn't really matter. You would get exactly the same result. And it's quite trivial. Because on the right here, we can think of this, which is not really a function. It is a special function, but it is some kind of even function. So you can also change the sign here, because the odd part, which is related to the sign, it will be zero. And only the cosine will contribute, but uh, uh, the argument of the cosine can also be... So we can change the, the sign of the argument of, of the cosine, right? So this is some kind of intuition. And of course, you will also get something very similar if you integrate, for example, from minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the plus or minus i k x dx instead of dk. And in this case, you would get 2 pi delta of k. So it's really similar. It doesn't add anything relevant because it's already contained there, if you think about it. And this expression is very important also in physics, for example, because uh, when you have packets of waves in quantum mechanics, well, this kind of uh, integral uh, will uh, occur several times. And not just for that, but whenever you have waves and we have, whenever you have some wave functions, it is quite frequent to encounter this kind, this kind of uh, integrals. Anyway, I wanted to arrive at this result to show you that this result is very important in defining the Fourier transform. So if we define the Fourier transform like this, in particular, I have an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of a function f of x e to the minus i k x dx, and we define this as f hat of k, so it will depend on k when you integrate. We can show that we can define the inverse transform in this manner. Integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f hat of k e to the i kx dk over 2 pi, and we can show that this is equal to f of x, so it's exactly the inverse transform. And how do we prove that? from what we have simply obtained in this uh, lecture. Well, we can substitute this expression here, and we have to be a little careful because we have to relabel the variable x in a different manner because we have another x here, but the integral, I mean, the, the variable x that we have in this integral should be labeled differently than uh, this one. That's simply because uh, this is a dummy variable. So we can rewrite this expression like this, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of x prime, and then I have e to the minus i k x prime dx prime, and then I have e to the i k x, and then I have dk over 2 pi, and then we can rewrite this as integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of x prime. And then I have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the i k x minus x prime dk over 2 pi dx prime. 
and now we know the result for uh, this uh, kind of integration this will be equal to the Dirac delta of x minus x prime and therefore here we get integral from minus infinity to plus infinity f of x prime delta of x minus x prime dx prime and now we can apply uh, we can use a simple property of the Dirac delta so when we multiply the Dirac delta by a function we can evaluate the function at the point where the Dirac delta is uh, infinity so where we have the Dirac delta so the point at which the Dirac delta is located and then we have f of x delta of x minus x prime so this is how we can rewrite that and therefore this is equal to f of x integral from minus infinity to plus infinity delta of x minus x prime dx prime but this is simply equal to 1 and therefore this is equal to f of x which is exactly what we wanted to prove and therefore we have proved that the inverse transform can be written like this